What's up guys? Welcome to Geo Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while throw in other whiskey related content. Today I've got a list for you guys, but it's not a list that I chose. This is a list that was chosen by my supporters and the premise was that they would choose their top seven Highland whiskeys and they chose some really good ones. So it'll be a fun one. Stick around. Okay, so I want to start off this video with a big thank you. Uh, as some of you may have heard, we had a pretty major earthquake in Taiwan last week, and I had quite a lot of you reach out and check in on me. Luckily, I wasn't here last week. I was traveling at the time, so I didn't feel a thing, but I was genuinely touched by how many people wrote into me and just wanted to make sure I was okay. And I am totally okay and almost of equal importance. The whiskey behind me is totally okay too. Nothing fell down, nothing broke. One bottle did actually fall down, but it was caught by the couch, so all is well. But yeah, to all of those of you who reached out to me to check in on me, uh, I genuinely appreciate it. So thank you very much. Or as they say here in Taiwan, muchos gracias. Anyway, on to the video. Uh, last year, towards the end of the year, when I was doing my best of 2023 lists, uh, obviously I put out a bunch that were like my own opinions, but there was one video in the mix that wasn't whiskeys of my choosing. It was whiskeys that were chosen by my supporters more specifically my patrons, and they made some really good choices and that video went over very well and I figured I would just kind of milk that concept again and tell you what, if this video goes well, then I am open to the possibility of even more milking. That sounds weird. And yeah, I just kind of like the idea of getting my supporters in on the action, having them participate in more videos. Uh, they're wonderful people, uh, except for Lester. He's a bit of a dickhead, but the rest of them, really, really nice. Anyway, our concept is top seven Highland whiskeys. Once again, I had zero input here. These were all done by my supporters in the sense that they put the bottles forward and then they voted for the ranking. So I had absolutely no say in this. And as usual, guys, I do have a mystery pour in my glass. This one is a well-respected and well-aged Highland whiskey. Your hint for today's mystery pour is cologne. Am I talking about men's perfume? Am I talking about the city in Germany? Did I mispronounce colon? Stay tuned. And I guess that is our intro covered, so let's not drag this out any further. As usual, guys, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, blah, 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 blah. Kicking off our list at number seven, we've got Glengarry 12. Now, this is a whiskey that, personally, I never really got. It's one of those ones where it's just a darling to so many enthusiasts, and I never really connected with it. And I just don't know why. I mean, there's gotta be something to it. I must be missing something. Pretty much the entirety of the whiskey community and clearly my supporters find something very special in it. So I guess maybe I'll have to come back to it at some point. It's been years since I touched on it. Um, but yeah, it was never really one that I loved. Not that I dislike it or anything, but it just never lit a fire under my ass. But still, it is richly flavored. It's 48%, it's sherried. Um, it's an interesting pick and it comes in at number seven. So there we go, Glengarry 12. Next up, we've got an absolute star. Very pretty, very vibrant, loads of fun. Uh, this beautiful Highlander, from the moment I sniffed this beautiful Highlander, I fell in love. And it's been love ever since. Of course, I'm talking about, about Glencadam 10. This one is a staple. I think it's an essential bottle. If you're getting to know Highland whiskey, it's the Highlands at their best. It is unpretentious. It is affordable. It is soft and delicate and floral and vibrant and bright. And if you're an enthusiast, this is also craft and age stated. So 46% non-chill filtered natural color and obviously 10 years old. Um, but beyond all that, it's just a delicious whiskey. Now, both this one and the 15 year old were under consideration. They were both bottles put forward by my uh, supporters. Uh, but the 10 was the one to break into the top seven, and I think that was the right call. I do love the 15, but I think the 10 is a little bit brighter, a little bit fresher. It's also more affordable. Uh, it's one of those ones, it doesn't have any drama. There's no peat, there's no sherry in here, but it's just got this very distillate driven and delicate flavor profile that I think is absolutely delicious. If you haven't tried it yet, it is worth checking out. So there we go, Glen Cadam 10. And now for something completely different. Number six, our Glen Cadam 10 was very bright and fresh and distillate driven. And our number five whiskey is going to take us in a totally different direction. This one is the Edra Dower Caledonia. This one is rugged and funky. And despite the fact that we have a very, very strong influence from very strong sherry casks, we still get the distillate shine through behind that. 
It's powerful, it's dirty, it won't be for everyone, even if you're a sherry lover. This one is a very unique and very particular flavor profile. I think it's one that suits enthusiasts very well because a lot of them look for more challenging and let's say funky whiskeys. This is one of them. Personally, I love this one. I think it's one of the coolest 12 year old sherried whiskeys out there. I'm sensitive to too much cask influence. This has a lot of cask influence, but it still makes it work. Uh, and listen, even if you don't end up liking this one, I still think it's worth trying just because it's got such a singular character. So uh, makes total sense to be on this list. Comes in at number something, Edradour Caledonia. All right, so for number four, we've got a whiskey that's very near and dear to my heart. It's not one that I expected to make it onto this list. And that's because for everyone who absolutely loves this stuff, there's an equal number of people out there who find it kind of unimpressive and some even go so far as to call it generic. I don't think it is those things, but yeah, it's certainly a divisive whiskey. This one is Oban 14. If you're a regular viewer, then you'll know that I love Oban. In fact, it's one of my all-time favorite distilleries. It can be a hit or miss brand, but at its best, it's a wonderfully complex and coastal whiskey. Sadly, Oban is owned by Diageo, and so they're not always craft. This one is not craft. It's 43%. It's colored. It's chill filtered. Despite all that, I still love this stuff and I was happy to see that my supporters do too. So even though they have very questionable taste in YouTube content, they do have good taste in whiskey. This is a good one in my book and I think it is worth trying. It won't be for everyone, but check it out anyway. Open 14. All right, so we've broken into the top three and at number three, we've got the Kleinlich 14. Kleinlich 14 is a Diageo product and it's a little bit unique for a Diageo product in the sense that it gives us a proper ABV of 46%. Diageo is of course very stingy about their ABVs and very few products are 46% or higher. Uh, we do get a bunch that are like special releases but part of standard core ranges, few and far between we get this, Liga 8, uh, let me know if I missed anything. But yeah, it's it's there's not a lot. Anyway, I've always been more of an Oban 14 guy. That's not to say that I don't like this stuff. I do. I think it's good. However, I do find it inconsistent. And that's another thing that's rather rare among standard releases from Diageo. Diageo, for the most part, I guess to their credit, um, does keep things pretty stable. Kleinlich 14 is not. Uh, it's a batchy whiskey. If you end up getting a good one, this one will give you some wonderful waxiness, which is what the brand is known for. We get this beautiful, subtle complexity. It is a great Highland profile. At other times, though, it can come off a little bit flat. I have had some disappointments from Kleinlich 14, so it is a mixed bag. I do still think it's worth checking out, and let's hope that you get a good bottle, because if you do, you are thoroughly going to enjoy it. Um, so there we go. Lens at number three, Kleinlich 14. Number two is a bit of a surprise. It's from a distillery that's very popular right now, and I'm not surprised to see it on this list, but for it to land the number two spot against so many legendary whiskeys, uh, that's that's impressive. This one is the Ardnamurchan AD. This one is easily the youngest whiskey on this list, although you wouldn't know it. Uh, Ardnamurchan can make whiskey that rivals the greats, and it does that without any of their whiskeys having reached 10 years old yet, and that's impressive. Um, anyway, our AD here, this one is their flagship release, and it's got everything we love about the brand. We get some gentle peat here, we get a slight touch of sherry, a good bourbon influence, and we get a wonderful coastal character. I love my coastal whiskeys. Now Ardnamurchan, while officially being on the Scottish mainland, I think in its heart of hearts, it's an islands whiskey, and I love that about it. In fact, the same could be said for Oban. Like my favorite Highland whiskeys that are not on the islands tend to be in the Western Highlands. They're the most coastal whiskeys. I'm a sucker for that style. Uh, anyway, if you've not heard of Arden American, you must be living under a rock. They have a very good reputation, but it's well-deserved. And I think our AD here would be a great introduction to the brand if you want to get started with them. So check it out. Arden American AD comes in at number two. All right, so for our number one spot, this is a whiskey that I have looked at on the channel before, but it's been a while and I need to revisit it, reassess it. I'll be looking at it again soon. It is also the oldest whiskey on this list, which is strange because this is a list of popular whiskeys. Usually 18 year old whiskeys are more prohibitive in the pricing. This one made it to number one. This one is the Inok 18. So while I am surprised to have an 18 year old in the number one spot, I get it. It makes sense to me. Uh, this stuff is fantastic. I think it's one of the best bang for buck 18s on the market right now. It's fully craft. We have a wonderful sherried influence. And behind that, we have that really unique Anok character. So 
there's a lot to love here. And what's nice about this whiskey is that it's not weird, it's not challenging. I think it's got a very broad appeal. It's sweet and fruity and easy going and satisfying for those who are just looking for something casual. If you're a whiskey nerd, if you're an enthusiast, this one is fully craft. It's aged, it's complex, and it's sophisticated. So there's something here for everyone. So it checks a lot of boxes and it's again very affordable for an 18 year old. This one, I have a lot of things to say about it, but I'm going to save those for the review. Spoiler alert though, I am going to like this one and it makes sense as number one pick. It's beautiful whiskey, a knock 18. All right, that was the list guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep in mind it is all opinion. And of course, I want to hear from you. What are your favorite Highland whiskeys? Keep in mind that for the sake of this list, we're disregarding the islands. I want to hear what your favorite mainland Highland whiskeys are. What do you got? And finally, for those of you who suck around to find out what the mystery port in my glasses here, I'm drinking Deanston 18. Now your hint earlier was cologne. I always get a strong cologne note from Deanston whiskeys. Uh, and it's not a note that I really love. I find it overbearing at times. Luckily, the 18 here uh, doesn't overdo it. It's a lot more toned down. Anyway, I wanted to include this as a mystery pour for a few reasons. A, I just felt like drinking it. Two, it made sense off the back of the Anak 18. Both are affordable 18-year-old Highlanders. And six, this is not one that I've been hearing a lot of chatter about recently. It is well-respected within the community, but no one's really been talking about it over the last few months, and I felt like talking about it. So yeah, Deanston 18, check it out. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to help out the channel, I do have Patreon and PayPal listed down below. This channel is all me from buying the whiskey to scripting, to shooting, to editing. Anything and everything helps from you guys. And for those of you who are already supporting the channel, again, massive thank you. Um, and I guess that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.